Hello and welcome back to my small little library. In today's video I want to talk about Tolkien. Um, <laughs> I'm slowly like making my way through some authors I want to talk about. I'm thinking about doing just like specific author videos and so I did want to kind of start with Tolkien. Um, <laughs> I for one am a really 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 big fan of his work and I do get that obviously not every book is for everyone, I mean we probably all know that. Um, but yeah, for me The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings are pretty much like a classic fantasy book that I personally think everyone should read just once. Just to get like a little bit of a feeling for what inspired a lot of modern fantasy because I for one think that Tolkien really was one of those um, authors that inspired a lot of other authors and you, I mean in some books you can see it more and some books you can see it less but I think all in all he did have a lot of influence and I mean his books are really loved around the world so yeah let's talk about Tolkien okay so let's talk about who talking was and um, yeah just a little bit about him before we start on his books and so he was called uh, John Ronald Rule Tolkien and he's obviously British and um, his studies were with languages so he did work as a literary professor for Oxford yeah so obviously even outside of his books he had like a key interest in languages anyway and um, yeah, he actually started writing his mythology and the start of Middle-earth actually lay in his youth. So if you think about that, he started kind of late to write the books and he like they, he was older when the books were um, published. Like The Hobbit uh, was published in 1937 for the first time and um, Tolkien was born in 1892. So um, he always, already was 49 when his first book was actually published and if you then think about that he started writing it in his youth so there's a long time he took to kind of like evolve his story and the myth and all of the world of Middle-earth which I think but he had a job so it wasn't that he um, had to be quick writing the book to make money with it, you know? And I don't think that he really thought that he could make money with it at the beginning because that kind of fantasy really wasn't that seen that often. Especially if you think about that he originally wanted to publish The Lord of the Rings as one book. And um, yeah, nobody thought that it would make sense because people didn't want to read such long books. And so that is the reason that The Lord of the Rings is um, split into three parts just because they didn't want to publish it in one part. So um, other than his fiction, Tolkien also published a lot of um, texts on literary. I mean he was a professor for <laughs> English literary um, or for the English language um, so he did publish a lot of those way before he published anything uh, fiction-like so uh, he was familiar with writing books and stuff really early on in his uh, career actually and the first thing he actually published was a middle english vocabulary which like it was fitting but it's kind of cute you know <laughs> and yeah then even though he wrote the lord of the rings first i'm pretty sure he published the hobbit first um because the um publishing service he worked with they wanted like a children's book and so yeah the Hobbit was published in 1937, as I said, and The Lord of the Rings was published in 1954 and 1955. Um, like, all three of them consecutively after one another. And then there were a lot of, like, shorter stories that were published in between. Um, and after that, and actually as I'm looking at the, um, as the dates here, it actually took 15 years to get The Lord of the Rings um, translated into German actually, which I think is quite interesting. Um, today, 
lot like books get translated really really quickly you can almost always get like the german translation of an english book pretty much the same time as you can get the english book i think even well for um books published by big publishing companies obviously like um, indie published books obviously aren't translated, but um, you get, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, and then The Silmarillion was the first posthumous published book um, put together by his son, who did a lot of... Um, yeah, he, a lot of his work was just collecting his father's works and putting them in readable orders and making books out of them. And he um, died three years ago. Uh, Tolkien died in um, 1973. So yeah, a lot of the stuff that came out later was published posthume and put together by her son. And then obviously now that his son isn't alive anymore, um, there are still other people who continue putting things together. I don't know if, if there's much to come still, um, but yeah, we have gotten a lot, which I think is quite nice. Um, I think it's quite cool that his son um, loved doing that so much. And then Tolkien also published a lot of poetry, which I think is quite nice. If you read, for example, the story of Tom Bombadil, there's a lot of um, poetry in there. I really enjoyed that. Also in like The Lord of the Rings and stuff, you have a lot, you have a lot of songs in that rhyme and are a lot more poetic than songs nowadays are maybe. Um, and yeah, he also like published a lot of poems. I don't know if there's like a collection of those poems out there, but I will definitely look into that because I haven't read many of those, only those that are in the books that I own. Um, which are quite a few in like the um, Samarillion and stuff, you have poems about stuff. Um, but I would love to read more of his poems, to be honest, because I did quite enjoy them. Um, first of all, I just want to share with you, with you which books I've read from him and in which editions I own them. I don't own, like, all of the pretty editions, to be honest, because um, the Lord of the Rings books can be really, really, really expensive in certain editions. I will do a video about, like, book prices and special editions and so in the near future, because I do really want to talk about that and, yeah, but <laughs> let's stop the tangent, you know. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna show you which versions I own and what I've read already, um, because I haven't read all of his books yet. And um, yeah, first of all, starting, I obviously read The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, and I've read this um, book set version that is inspired um, by the original versions that came out, and I personally really, really like this um, these really simple covers, to be honest. Um, I think they look very, very sleek. And um, yeah, for me, these are all five star books. Um, I'm just really, really in love um, with Tolkien's writing style. And I don't know, I, I, I think I sometimes I struggle a lot with like more modern fantasy books because for me, <laughs> Fantasy, like the really classic fantasy, is like in olden times. Like the setting is always older and not modern. And so I do personally really love it if the writing style and the tone of voice really reflects that. And I think in <laughs> a, a bit more of the modern th fantasy, the tone oftentimes it's more modern, which makes sense, but yeah, I'm for one, I really enjoy um, the more like laid back, um, but maybe also a little bit more severe writing style that um, Tolkien has. And so, um, yeah, really big fan of those. Then I own a second book set. Um, this one I love quite a bit. I have these really pretty hardback editions of um, The Fall of Gondolin, Baron and Luthien, and The Children of Rurin. Um, these are some of the more finished stories uh, and the longer stories that Tolkien has written. Um, that are all set before uh, The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Um, these are pretty much stories uh, that are in the world. Um, 
that yeah just give you more of an idea what the world is about and um, especially these characters which like the fall of Gondolin, Gondolin plays a really big for, uh, role uh, in the later books and then Baron and Luthien and the children of Hurin obviously are part of the history so yeah I really like reading these um, though I have to be honest I don't think that these will be for everyone because except for The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings a lot of the other books um, read more like history books which in my mind do make a lot of sense because they are kind of history books because you get more history on the world that the Lord of the Rings is set in um, but that also makes it kind of harder to read for a lot of people so I can totally understand if you only stick to the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit and don't go into more of the history um, but yeah so um, I think these editions are really pretty also um, it's pretty cool that the illustrations are by Alan Lee um, those are like really really pretty editions and really really pretty um, illustrations. Let me just like find one. I am absolutely in love with those. Um, they're absolutely worth it for the illustrations alone to be honest. And um, yeah, so these are stories even though I think they read a little bit more historic but these are still stories so um, these three books aren't like um, just like information books like these are really stories um, set in the same world um, then I also own The Fall of Gondolin in this paper pick edition because I bought this first and then my partner surprised me with the box set so <laughs> I do own it two times but to be honest I don't mind at all um, then I have this paperback, with, uh, which is um, Tales from the Perilous Realm. These are shorter stories, um, just like pretty much the same as the other three that I showed you. Um, just like really a few short stories um, set in the same world and that give you like more of an idea how the world evolved and like a little bit of different characters than you get in the other books. For example, one story that is in here is The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, a character you get to see later on but don't really get like a feeling, like a real feeling about um, because he does only play a little, really, really small role in the later books. Um, uh, not the later books, but in uh, The Lord of the Rings. But here you have a complete story about him that gives you a little bit of a background what kind of a character he is, a little bit of extra information and so yeah I really enjoyed this as well these are also still stories so um, yeah well I mean all of his books are stories but you know what I mean some of them are really more like history and information and some of them are more stories and then the last book I've already read is The Silmarillion um, I for one was confronted with a lot of people who told me don't read it, it's not interesting, uh, you probably won't like it, um, it's not really stories, it's a lot of history and yeah I, I just get the feeling that a lot of people don't enjoy reading it. I for one absolutely loved it and I have to be honest I own this incredibly pretty edition, um, some good friends of mine um, gave it to me for my last birthday I think. On the birthday before that but yeah um, it is an incredibly great um, edition of uh, the Silmarillion um, and for me I found it incredibly interesting um, you have like a lot of um, information about the different races that lived on the continent when they lived how they died how they came to be how they influenced the whole story um, and the whole land and all of that is in here and I for one love a good like yeah I mean he built a whole world you know we all know that like Tolkien really built a world to set his stories in and I think if he would have maybe started a little bit sooner with writing more stories he could have finished a lot more and we would have a lot more set in the same world but yeah I think if you like want to know a little bit more and don't mind like a history <laughs> book um, approach to widening what you know about the world of the Lord of the Rings, of Middle-earth and all the other things that are there, I would say 
pick it up. It, it is really interesting. I don't know. I, I like to know more about the world. I can really lose myself um, in The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Um, I can't do that with a lot of books, to be honest. Like, it has to be like, it has to really hit me, but The Lord of the Rings is like one of those comfort read, reads for me. Um, and so I can really lose myself in the story. And so I always thought it was really, really great that I could have so many extra informations. And I mean, you have to be, well, not careful. <laughs> want to say careful but I don't think you have to be careful but yeah you, know, you have to keep in mind that a lot of the books that came out later like the Silmarillion and um, yeah pretty much all of the books that were edited by his um, son um, Christopher Tolkien um, they weren't finished by Tolkien there were a lot of manuscripts and he also tended to change names along but along the journey of writing, all he did write, and so um, I think it's interesting. Um, sometimes they keep the old names, sometimes they use the new names in these extra books. But I think it's cool to see how the stories evolved, and they don't put the same story in all of the books. I, for one, have like in the Silmarillion, obviously, there are the stories of the other books, um, like the Fall of Gondolin and stuff, are also in the Silmarillion, but in different versions because for the Fall of Gondolin in the book they obviously took all of the versions and made one story out of it, like one big long story and in the Silmarillion there are only like snippets of the things that he wrote and also like compared different versions because he sometimes wrote the same story twice or th three times and then well, you have three versions of the same story which are slightly different and so those are always um, talked about also. In the extra books, the introductions are really, really long in those books but they they are good to read to get like more of a feeling what the process was to gather all of the manuscripts the Turkey left behind. And um, so yeah, for me, these books are really, really great but I would say if you haven't yet at least read The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings because even though if you don't have all of the extra history it is an incredible world and it's so detailed and yeah you just you just have to love the characters you know <laughs> but um, yeah now we're coming to the last book that I own that I haven't read yet and I will also tell you why <laughs> I just have to get it and the last book I own is um, the Nature of Middle-earth, and this one was um, edited by Karl of Hostetter, so not by his son. But yeah, I own this one, and the only reason I haven't read it yet is that I didn't realize that it is part of a series um, about Middle-earth, and there are, I don't know, eight books before this one? Yeah, there are a few um, that should be read before this one, and so I've decided to hold off and get the other ones first, um, but I do want to get them in these really pretty hard back, hardcover editions and they are really expensive, <laughs> which um, means that I haven't gotten them yet, just because I have to save up for that. And at the moment I do want to read other stories and these are more of the history kind of. These do are supposed to read more like the Silmarillion, they give you more of an insight into the world um, and yeah I mean there are a lot of like let me let me just show you there are a lot of like um, tables about how many people lived and um, yeah a lot of that and this one especially deals with the later writings he did and so this is obviously like towards the end of that series, so yeah, I can't read it yet. Um, but I can't wait to read it actually because it's just all so interesting, like the, all of the thought he put into that world, um, it, it reads just like it could be just a real world out there that we haven't known about and so I really love the fact that you can read still more about it even though there isn't anything new written about it by it um, if you haven't read all of those history books about Middle-earth yet. 
Um, this is obviously a great read. Yeah, so for me Tolkien is just like a really really big influence when it comes to fantasy. Also, just when it comes to fan fantasy that I enjoy reading. Um, I've read a few books where you really really directly can see Tolkien's input. For example, the Shannara Chronicles. Um, they have a lot of similarities to Tolkien. Obviously, they're not a copy of the book. They do their own thing, but I think you can really see the influence there. Um, and also stuff like the Wheel of Times and just like the these big fantasy epics, um, you can really see what kind of an influence Tolkien had. And um, in all honesty, I'm just really happy that we get to have books like The Lord of the Rings. I don't know, I think that even if you do not particularly enjoy fantasy, I mean obviously you won't then read the books because they're fantasy and you probably won't be interested in them, but I think that just the style in which Tolkien wrote is just such a, I don't know, such a serious style which is really befitting for the books. But also, in, it's just such a descriptive style of writing that you can really feel like you're there with everything that happens. And um, yeah, for me that always really impressed me when I read the book. Um, I for one, um, I'm a person, I can't um, picture things in my head. I think there might be a name for it, I'm not diagnosed with something, but like I can't picture like how characters look in my head or how things look. I just, there's nothing there. Um, so sometimes I'm struggling if the books are not descriptive enough because then like my head won't fill the gaps. So I'm always like, it's really fitting for me if there's more description rather than less description, even though some people hate too much description, you know. Um, yeah, and then for the last let's talk a little bit about the movies. Um, I'm not a big movie person, I have to say that. Um, I really love The Lord of the Rings, but I also love The Hobbit films, which I know are, is quite like an unpopular opinion. <laughs> but for me, all of those films are really, really great because they transport me in this really, really great world and just the way they did the story. Obviously it isn't one-to-one -one in the books and they did change quite a bit of things to make it a little bit more modern. Like you can really see that if you watch the films. Um, but I think all in all these are quite good um, versions to give you the book if you don't want to read it, which they are big books. I can understand if you don't want to read the um, whole book and not everyone likes to read. Um, so I think that if you aren't interested in reading the books, but haven't watched the movies yet, I would really recommend. Um, especially The Lord of the Rings. I for one like The Hobbit movies, but they're not for everyone. Um, a lot of people kind of dislike them and there are a lot, of more, a lot more changes in The Hobbit films when it comes to the book than there are in The Lord of the Rings films. So um, if you look for accuracy, The Lord of the Rings um, films are a lot better than The Hobbit, um, but yeah, I think they are really really nice um, films, so why not watch them? And I also did listen to The Lord of the Rings um, as an audiobook, and if you can, go and listen to the audiobooks that the Gollum actor actually recorded and pub um, that were published. They are by far the best. His voice is just so fitting and obviously he speaks Gollum. <laughs> and I mean he is the voice of Gollum and he does the voice in the audiobooks which is just divine. It is so so great. So um, if you are into audiobooks, even if you've read The Lord of the Rings already, I would really recommend um, listening to those, I will put the name of the actor on screen here. I'm terrible with names, so I can't remember it. I'm really sorry. Um, but I will put it on screen here so that you can look for them because they are just the best. And um, I'm, yeah, it took me a long time to get into audiobooks and that one is by far the best one I've listened to. I have to say it. Um, and yeah, it's also, I think Lord of the Rings works really, really great as an audiobook. So. Um, 
if you are more into audiobooks, go and do that route. But um, yeah, I just, yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know if this kind of a video will work. Um, <laughs> Maybe leave your opinion in the comments down below if you think that this is a format that works and if you would like me to read about uh, to talk about more authors that I've read. And um, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, obviously comment, maybe subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!